Hey guys, what's happening? So, I thought I'd show you guys my indexer um, conversion project. So, if you're new to my channel, I don't even know if I even post a video. I have like 20 videos back, but um, like I have 20 videos to make that I even posted. But uh, originally, I got this whole indexer set up. I got a whole, you know, I think I did actually make a video about that, but I got a whole lot of indexers and uh, I sold all the rest of the parts that came with it and I just kept two of the indexers so this is a Japanese uh, built uh, rich mill indexer that it's converted to this is actually running Mach 3 and this is running my, on my uh, CNC router but uh, I kept the parts to make two of them um, but the original separate motor this thing actually came with they're impossible to find you can't get them anymore so I kept enough parts to make another one and let me show you what I'm going to do here. So, here's the other one. It's all painted. Uh, ready to go. It's a 5C, call it closer. And like I said, I kept all the, not enough parts out of that whole huge lot that I got to make, like, uh, put the light on here, um, to make a, another complete one that I can actually run on a uh, NEMA 23 stepper. So, here is the parts I painted this last night. So, there actually is like a like a metal thing in there. I mean, it's all it's all sealed. It's it, it's uh, oil based, lubricated. So one of the things I need to do is, and funny, this actually fits perfectly on here. But the hole spacing for the NEMA 23 was a little bit different. I mean, I could have brought the holes out, but then it would have interfered with the the sealing part here, right? If I would have brought the holes out, I guess you can't see it. Let me see. I think I have a box over here an extra one I kept like I said I kept enough spare parts uh, so in case one of these wears out like an extra worm gears you know an extra extra couple extra seals um, you know so that's this is actually what it looks like I want to bring it up here so it has like the seal plate that goes in there right and normally it's like some kind of non NEMA base stepper uh, well with the, with the rich mills they had a bunch of different they had stepper versions of it they had servo versions of it, a um, bunch of different versions of it, so um, that just goes in there and just, it just creates a seal to, you know, pr protect the uh, stepper from getting oil coming back into it. So what I did was, because the holes didn't line up, like these four holes right here didn't perfectly line up, I basically just tilted this to the side. I drilled new holes here, 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 and here, and here. I'm just gonna have it sideways like this so instead of being like they're, they're so close too they're, they're close but I have to bring out a couple of millimeters so I'm, I'm just gonna have it going like this but yeah I had that huge lot I mean I had enough parts to make like 10 of these but what's funny is I actually bought the whole lot for 200 bucks and I sold all the parts for like a thousand to some guy that actually like it was a refurbisher because I don't actually have all the gaskets for it um, I'm going to use my laser cutter and make some new gaskets. I already 3D printed some gaskets just to check for fitment. And I got this paper roll here of gasket material. And then I'm going to use, brought down my laser cutter, which I haven't used for a couple years. It's a dribble based laser cutter. Maybe I'll then make, make a video about me making the gaskets. But uh, so, yeah, I need to make a gasket like that on the laser cutter and then I'm going to use my little to make like this little uh, centerpiece I'm going to use my little mini lathe over here to something like that I need to create like a metal um, not like a spacer but like a metal thing to and I put a little sealant in there and then with the lock nut so I'm going to cut a little chunk off there my band saw right there and uh, go back and go on the lathe. Actually, the diameter is actually perfect to fit in there already, so outside I'm just probably going to polish. And then, um, yeah, because really all I have to do is drill a hole. I don't think really, the outside diameter is perfect. Yeah. I'm just going to try to face this thing off here. I'm 
man, the final step. It's not so much. Alright, got the first one through. Yeah, I won't go into so much detail about this machining part of it. All I'm doing is just drilling holes. Alright, so I'm going to do an M4 set screw. Because this thing actually has to spin around with the shaft. I hope you guys can see what I'm trying to do on video here. So with the one hand. So the set screw holds the thing in place so it spins around. And then I put a little bit of a silicone sealant on the shaft so oil doesn't come back through. And then this just goes on top of it like that. And prevents oil from going back into the actual leaking out of the top here. So yeah, these things are really expensive. I think they're like 10, over 10 grand. Or well, the rich mills, I mean the individual units are like almost 10 grand. Uh, even used are $2,500 on eBay. Um, yeah, very well built though. I mean it's, you know, not like one of those cheap ones you get on Amazon for a few hundred bucks. Alright, um, I'm just becoming a mess here. But, alright, M5 bolts. Some uh, petroleum jelly on there to lube up the seal. I mean, the seal is probably 40 years old, who knows. It's weird is there was some sort of encoder at one point. Uh, I'm not sure what it was because some, I never, none of the servos or steppers had encoders, but that actually, that stepper is a closed loop stepper, so that's a coder, but because um, even like when I had this thing taken apart, I was trying to figure out, okay, if I, if I made this thing home, right, if it goes back to the home position right here, like this is the home switch, um, maybe I'll keep it on there and I'll test it and see if I actually get it to home. Right, I just here inter is the laser cutting machine that I probably made uh, like four years ago. So I hardly ever use it, but it's cool to have when you need it. Um, I mean, I guess I did some of my Christmas ornaments one year. I did, uh, but one of the reasons I got it was to make gaskets. You know, make these custom gaskets for cars or whatever, you know. Alright, so sorry for the background noise, but I'm going to do a, uh, I've already done a couple tests. Um, like I said earlier previously, I'm just going to be doing like markings. Then I'm going to cut out the rest because I've already tried to cut through it. You know, it's all different feed rates, different passes, and, uh, I'm just going to mark it so I can cut it back out. Just as like a template to cut it out with my exacto knife. Alright, we'll give it a shot. Four passes, 50 or 300 feed rate. Um, and then I actually had to modify the G-code to turn the fan on. For some reason the, the dribble laser post processor doesn't add the M8 to turn the, my air assist on. Um, or M9. Alright, let's go. I mean, this material is obviously too thick, but... Uh, I mean, I could get away with probably half the width. Because the original one that I had, the, or the other one I have, um, the complete one that I it's usable, um, had much thinner rubber, but just what I had. I actually, yeah, there it is. Yeah, I'm gonna go back with my exacto knife and cut it out. I'm right, doing my sample piece. Actually, I think I forgot to lower the feed rate down from a thousand millimeters per minute to three hundred. Um, yeah, because when I go this fast, it, this this laser's not powerful, so it's. I mean, it was actually the most powerful that you could get at the time, but I think it was 20 milliwatt. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's that was just advertised or actually the true rating. I mean, it wasn't cheap. I think it was like 200 bucks back in the day, though. Um. Yeah, because when you go too fast, it doesn't cut all the way through. But if I go down to about 300, I mean, this looks like it might be going through the paper, but 300 is better for this laser. Yeah, so this is why I do test pieces right here. Um, so it doesn't fit here, so I got to make this internal diameter a little bit bigger here. Looks like I have a good sample. I'm not doing with like laser dribble. I mean, it's, like, laser dribble is like good for cutting. I mean, you can do some rastering, but it's um, so one of the things I do is I do the frame so that I can kind of go through and see if it's going to fit in there or not. You know, so as long as that frame. You know, it stays within the frame, then we're going to be good. You know what I mean? It's going to... The part will be in there. Right, here we go. Four passes. 300 millimeters per minute. Full power. Alright. Hopefully it's going to make a cut through. I didn't do a sample on this, this material. 
mean, it looks like did I get it in one shot already? I don't know. But the cool thing is, like, you know, with the whole laser thing, at least I'd have a template to cut it out if I had to cut it out. Like I did with the rubber one. But ideally, I'd like to go all the way through. Um, but usually, like I said, four passes at 300 millimeters per minute. Uh, full power, usually good, good for pretty thick paper. But this is like a, like a rubberized paper, so I'm not familiar with that. But, wow, this is pretty thick. It's probably just rubberized, I guess. Um, I probably don't have to go that with the exact knife, because you'll never get it back in the same spot again. But, um, alright, so we're good to go. Use the template, get some RTV on there. Alright, so I might still design a cover for this thing. Kind of like how the other one has the, the metal cover. That was a different servo, so it actually it came with the cover. Um, that, and I need to create this cover here. Like the original one, the part, there was, well, I guess there was some extra ones, but they were all screwed up, so. Um, I guess I either cut it out of metal, 3D print, I'll just probably you know, 3D print it. Um, just gotta seal that up where the old sensor used to be. But, uh, alright, here's the moment of truth. Uh, sometimes what you have to do is uh, step up the driver current, because this requires a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, but the other other stepper was pretty tiny, too. I don't care if I made a video on that one or not, but, alright, let's see if I can, this will work. Ah, there it goes. I haven't put any oil in there yet. <laughs> alright. Alright. So, on the other one, I had just, uh, the one over there, like I said, I already, had, I already had the stepper. I just had to wire it into, like, a regular, like, uh, step and direction, you know, stepper driver. I mean, I just did a pinout. I looked, it was actually a really nice stepper motor, but I looked at the pinouts. All right. Got my second, fourth axis. So, that was an incredible offer up score. Bought the whole lot for 200 bucks and turned around. Got two basically free indexers and sold the other parts and made 800 bucks. So, I mean, I had to store it for about a month in my garage, but um, yeah, this is not like some cheapo Amazon, eBay indexer. You know, this is a real deal, like heavy duty cast iron one with the 5C indexer. So, I ever want to do that. But, alright, guys, cool. I'm making progress.